This is Brittany from Just Be Crafty. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable harvest table dishcloth that's perfect for fall. I offer this pattern for free on my blog, as well as an ad-free printable version available for purchase in my shop. I'll have links to both options in the description box below. This tutorial is beginner friendly, but assumes you already know the following skills. Chaining, single crochet, and half double crochet. Once you've learned those skills, I'm confident you could tackle this pattern. For a complete list of materials, as well as other important pattern information, please see the link in the description box below. Before we get started, I want to take the time to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and to hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I post a new tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And now, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. To get started, grab your main color and create a slip knot. Place the slip knot on your hook and begin by chaining three. So one, two, and three. Now, place a single crochet into the third chain from your hook. Now place a half double crochet into that same chain. We've just completed row one. So now we're going to turn our work and chain up two. So one, two, and we're going to start by placing a single crochet into that very first stitch. Single crochet. Now we're going to chain one. And now we're going to be working into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. So you're going to skip that next stitch and you're going to place a single crochet into the top of your turning chain. And you're going to place a half double crochet into that same space. That is row two. So now we're ready to turn our work and chain two. Make a single crochet into that first stitch and then chain one. This is where our moss stitch is going to start. So we're going to place our next single crochet into the chain one space from the previous row. So we're making our single crochet and now we're going to chain one and we're going to place our last stitches into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. We're going in that top turning chain we're going to place a single crochet and a half double crochet into that same chain. Now we can turn our work and start row four. We're going to start by chaining two, single crochet into that first stitch, chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space from the previous row, chain one, find that next chain one space, single crochet into that chain one space, now chain one, and we're placing our last two stitches into the turning chain from the previous row. So into that turning chain, we're going to be placing a single crochet and a half double crochet. So once again, turn our work, chain two, Place a single crochet into that first stitch, chain one. Place your next single crochet into the next chain one space from the previous row, chain one, and repeat that across the row. So we're single crocheting into the next chain one space, then we're chaining one. We have one more left in this row. They're a little, they might be a little hard to see, so you might have to move your work around with your fingers to find them. And now we've reached the last chain one space. And we're ready to do the last two stitches of the row. So we made our single crochet, we chained one, and now we're placing a single crochet and a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. Now we're ready to do the next row. So turn your work and chain two. Make a single crochet into that very first stitch, chain one, and single crochet into the next chain one space. 
You're going to repeat that single crochet and chain one into the next chain one space until you get to the end of the row. And as you can see with each row, you're gaining more stitches. So as you complete each row, your dishcloth is getting bigger. So now I'm at the end of the row. I just single crocheted into that last chain one space. So I chained one and now I'm placing a single crochet and a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. Keep working back and forth in rows in the same fashion until you've completed a total of 28 rows. I've completed my 28 rows and now it's time to start decreasing. So we're gonna turn our work and chain two and work our first decrease row. So we're going to now skip the first two stitches. So we're not gonna single crochet into that first stitch. We're gonna skip the first two stitches and you're going to place your first single crochet of the row into the next chain one space. We're going to chain one and then single crochet into the next chain one space. So we're going to work across this row just like we have for all the rest of the rows and the only thing to change will be the last stitch. So work your way across the rest of the row ending with a single crochet in the last chain space of the previous row. I've now reached my last single crochet and I'm ready to end the row. We're going to end by placing a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. And now our first decrease row is complete. Turn your work and now we're going to work on the next row. So chain two, we're going to skip those first two stitches and place our first single crochet of the row into the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. Work your way across the row ending with a single crochet in the last chain one space. I'm now working on my last single crochet of the row. That was my last chain space. And now I'm going to place a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. Now we're ready to turn our work and begin the next row. This is what your decrease sides should start looking like. So now for this next row, we're going to start again by chaining two and we're going to skip the first two stitches and place our first single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet into the next chain space. Once again, repeat this process until you get to the end of the row, ending on a single crochet in the last chain one space. I'm almost to the end of the row. I just have a couple more stitches to complete, so I'm working into that chain one space, chain one, single crochet in the next chain space. And I have one more chain it looks like. You might have to kind of maneuver your dishcloth with your fingers a little bit to find these chain spaces and make sure you don't go too far. So I've just done my last single crochet of this row and I'm going to place a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. Keep working back and forth in rows until your last completed row has only one chain one space. If you'd like, go ahead, pause here, and meet back up with me once you've made it to this point. We're now ready to complete our last couple rows. So start with a chain two like we have been. And now we're going to place a single crochet into that one and only chain space in this row. And now we're going to make a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. All right, so now we're ready to do our last row. We turn our work and we're just going to chain one for this one. And we're going to place a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain two from the previous row. So place a half double crochet into that chain and this completes the body of our dishcloth. Now that the body is done, we're ready to begin the border of our dishcloth. So rotate your project like so and start with a chain one. Into that corner space, 
you're going to make two single crochets. So you remember where you started? I suggest grabbing a stitch marker and placing it into that very first stitch. We're now going to place single crochets along the side edge of our work. This might be a little bit difficult, but just do the best you can. You want to make sure that you have a total of 30 single crochets along the side with your 30th single crochet being in the next corner space. I'm now at the next corner and I'm placing my 30th single crochet. So now side one is complete. Rotate your work and in that same space you just did that 30th single crochet, you're going to make two more single crochets into that same space. The two single crochets you just created are now going to count towards the 30 stitches on this next side. So you're going to repeat what you did for the first side. So you're going to single crochet across up until you get to the next corner and your 30th single crochet should be into the next corner. So if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you get to that next corner. Once again, I am at my next corner and I'm placing my 30th single crochet for that second side. Once again, we can rotate our work and now we're going to repeat that same process we did for side two for side three. We're making two more single crochets into that same corner stitch and we're going to single crochet across side three, ending with our 30th stitch in the next corner. Once again, if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you've placed your 30th single crochet in the next corner. I'm just about at the end of side three and I'm placing my 30th single crochet into that corner stitch. And now ready to begin side four. So once again, into that same space, we're going to make two more single crochets. Like we have for the previous sides, we're going to single crochet along side four. Our 30th stitch will be placed in the first corner. We've now almost completely wrapped around the entire dishcloth. I'm just placing my last couple stitches. That is my 29th single crochet. And now my 30th is going to go into the same space that we put our starting two single crochets in. And that's why it's nice that we've marked that first single crochet with our stitch marker. So go ahead, place your last single crochet into that same space as your first two. And then we can join the round by using a slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round. Clip your yarn and then take your tail and pull it through the loop on your hook and pull tight to secure. And we can now remove our stitch marker. So at this point, this is what your piece should look like. And now I am going to add on a puff stitch border in a contrasting color. We're going to be starting in a corner stitch. I would recommend starting in another random corner other than where we just finished. And just because it's a little bit easier to work with to start with, just so you can kind of get the hang of the puff stitch border. Starting in any corner center stitch, insert your hook and grab your contrasting color and wrap it around your hook and draw up a loop and chain one.
We're now going to make a half double crochet into that same stitch. So this next step might be a little bit awkward and you might have to try this a couple times but we're going to start the puff stitch. So to start that we're going to yarn over, take your crochet hook and wrap it around the post of the stitch you just created. Grab your working yarn, draw up a loop. You now have three loops on your hook and now we're going to do the same thing. You're going to yarn over, wrap your hook around the post of the stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, wrap your hook around the post of the stitch, draw up a loop. You should now have seven loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all loops on your hook to complete the stitch. And that is your first puff stitch. So since we're in the corner, we're going to be working two puff stitches into that same stitch. So you're going to repeat that process. You're going to start with a half double crochet. And now you're going to yarn over, wrap your crochet hook around the post of the stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, wrap your hook around the post of the stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, wrap your hook around the post of the stitch, draw up a loop. You should now have seven loops on your hook. You might have to move them around a little bit to make sure you have enough. And then yarn over and pull through all loops on your hook to complete the stitch. You might have to adjust your first stitch a little bit. To end the row, you'll be, um, you'll be joining with that stitch. So uh, if it looks a little bit wonky, it'll look fine once you've completed your border. We're going to skip the next stitch and half double crochet into the following stitch. Yarn over, wrap your hook around the post of the stitch, draw up a loop. Yarn over, wrap your hook around the post of the stitch, draw up a loop. Yarn over, wrap your hook around the post of the stitch, yarn over, and pull through all loops on your hook. We're now going to skip the next stitch and we're going to half double crochet into the following stitch. Keep working puff stitch in every other stitch around your dishcloth, making two puff stitches in each corner. Go ahead and pause here and meet back up with me once you've made it back around to where you started. I'm almost done, I'm just finishing up my last puff stitch. And I've just now completed my last stitch and now I am going to join the round with a slip stitch into the first puff stitch of the round. So it's a little bit hard to see but if you turn your work a little bit you can definitely see the top of the stitch. Slip stitch in that area. Grab your scissors and cut your yarn. Take that tail and pull it through the loop on your hook. I did this twice just to make it extra secure. And then pull tight to secure. So now we've finished our dishcloth and the only thing we have left to do is to weave in our ends. Turn your work over so the back side is facing front and grab your yarn needle and thread it with one of your tails. And there's really not too much technique going into this. I'm just trying to weave my ends in as inconspicuously as possible. So I go back and forth into stitches, just trying to hide my tails and making sure that they are secure and that they won't come loose. Once you feel that your tail is sufficiently weaved in, you can grab your scissors and clip it as close to your project as possible. Repeat that process for all remaining tails. Once your ends are all weaved in, you can turn over your work, and there you have it.
That's the Harvest Table Dishcloth. I really hope you found today's tutorial helpful. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and would like to, make sure you subscribe so you never miss a new tutorial. I typically come out with new pattern tutorials on Tuesdays and new stitch techniques on Fridays. So you definitely don't want to miss out. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!